Hey there, this is Bill Chambers and you're listening to Retrospectives with John Broughton on Casey Radio 97.7 FM. <laughs> no worries. Uh, just to go but way back to begin with, as, as a young lad growing up, can you remember a, a specific time when, when music began to become something that was really important to you? Um, I've got to be honest, it was when I was seven years old, my dad took me to uh, a country music concert with Chad Morgan mm. and Rick and Phil and a guy called Kevin King, who was big. Uh, well, he, we'll, we'll put it this way, he had a radio hit in the mid-50s. So that had a, a huge effect on me, and uh, I uh, uh, I was just, uh, even at that young age, I had this idea that I wanted to get involved in country music and uh, and be on stage. I wasn't sure how that was going to happen, I had no, no <laughs> idea, but... I just had these dreams, and uh, my mum got a guitar shortly after that, so um, I was fascinated, and she eventually gave up the guitar and handed it on to me, so I guess that's where it really started, but by the time I was uh, a teenager, mid-teens, I was into rock and roll and uh, different music, Uh, but I always had this love for country music and story songs, you know. Yeah, particularly Johnny Cash, Hank Williams, those sort of people. So, if you could pinpoint a, a uniform quality that existed amongst the artists that that you grew up listening to, it'd be that storyteller element. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It. Um, oh, well, uh, Hank's Hank's songs are really always based around love lost and heartache, whereas Johnny Cash's songs for more story. A little on the darker side, you would say, I guess, but I was always fascinated by that. And uh, I grew up in a Christian home uh, where they they frowned upon um, rock and roll in those days. But I was listening to Johnny Cash's murder ballads at the same time. <laughs> so they were probably worse, you know. <laughs> Take us back to those years out on the Nullarbor with your young family sitting around the campfire. Was it apparent to you at a, pretty quickly that you, your kids were quite talented musically? Uh, not, no, it wasn't that apparent at all. Um, I'd, I'd already done a bit of music and a bit of TV stuff when I was a, a teenager starting in around 17 through to my probably early 20s. And... Uh, then I had a family, so I decided to take them out bush and and um, become a professional fox hunter. <laughs> and, uh, those years were quite different, uh, and I, I thought I'd given up music forever. So we'd just sit around the campfire and play a few songs. We didn't take it very seriously at all. Uh, but when we came back to civilization after living on the Nullarbor, my kids were starting to grow up. I had a, a 13-year-old son and a... 10 year old daughter well they were pretty keen on music and we started a little band called the Dead Ringer Band and then we started doing gigs even though the kids were still very really young they they were pretty keen on the whole thing and encouraged me along so I sort of got back into music through my children mm. Looking back have, have you pondered um, what direction your, your life and your career may have taken with, without those years out on the Nullarbor was that a necessary part of the journey to, to where you're at now? Yeah I actually think it was um, even Casey recognises that she uh, like the Nullarbor years living in the bush were incredibly different to what we do now but for some reason it gave us this sense of survival uh, independence that Casey and Nash, both of my children, they still have that. And they do think their way, you know, they, they don't seem to follow the, the general pattern. And I think that probably come from those Nullarbor years living in the bush and surviving on next to nothing. And, mm. and it's a good grounding in a way. I think, uh, like Casey, for instance, still carries her own gear, helps the boys load the truck, stuff like that. And I think... 
you know, even though she's um, quite well known and she's um, uh, become a, a, you know, a bit of a star, uh, she's pretty grounded, you know, she still, do, still does a fair share of the hard work and I think that those years have probably helped. Yeah, yeah, definitely we'll keep you grounded. Help that and uh, help help me too, I guess, yeah, yeah. Mm. There must have been some hard yards on on the road with the the Dead Ringer band in those early days too. (laughs) (laughs) The very first trip we set off, we left South Australia where we were living and uh, we headed across to uh, New South Wales for our first gig, only to get there and find out it had been cancelled without telling us because we didn't have a mobile phone in those days. We got there to Dubbo, uh, like a two-day drive from where we were living, and uh, the gig had been cancelled, so we hung around in the scrub outside of Dubbo, just north of Dubbo, there's native pines, and we threw the swags on the ground, lit a campfire, and we hung around for a few days until we got a gig and made enough money to move. (laughs) That That was the very first tour that we did uh, and uh, you know we should have looking back it's a wonder we can just give up and go home you know? <laughs> <laughs> well then again but, I don't know they're, they're great men yeah. you know that, yeah. those things stick with you and it makes you realise that when times do get easier which is the now uh, you appreciate what you have you know? that's right yeah it's stories like that, that again that keep you grounded for sure yeah. yeah, yeah, and hey, I I left Sydney for Adelaide the other day uh, for a gig. Uh, my wife and I, I've uh, remarried. Uh, uh, Casey's mum and I were together many years, and then we split up. And I've met and remarried with a younger younger family now. But um, <laughs> we we left Sydney at five o'clock in the afternoon, heading for a gig Friday night in. Adelaide, and uh, we realised we'd run out of time, so we slept in the car for a few hours that night <laughs> on the way, <laughs> and uh, it took me back. I tell you, and I'm thinking I'm too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's a uh, it's life, you know. Yeah. Just, uh, so uh, when we just got to roll with it and uh, grin and bear it sometimes. Exactly. So when the Dead Ringer band ended, did you know right away what you wanted to do with the next phase of your life and career? I know you went to Sydney. Was that the plan right from the start? Um, Yeah, we went to Sydney before the band split up, actually. But no, we didn't really have a plan. I didn't know what would happen. Uh, My wife and I split up, so that was the end of the family band. And Casey started writing songs, and Nash, uh, my son, who was... Uh, almost three years older than Casey I think he saw the potential there and thought oh, I think I'll become my sister's manager which mm-hmm. he did and uh, he was reasonably successful at it and uh, encouraged her to write more songs and eventually got a good record deal with EMI and uh, I guess the rest is Casey's history really she, she got signed to EMI and um, had an album called The Captain that it, it even got known around the world and uh, Got a lot of airplay in America plus Australia. And by the time her second album came out, she had the hit song uh, "Not Pretty Enough." She was um, pretty much a household name. So, you know, uh, I, I, none of us foresaw that happening. Mm. And uh, I thought I, I wished my kids the best, and I was very proud of them. But I thought. Uh, I'd just have to battle on my own, doing my own career. But Casey asked me to join her band and uh, way back then, which was, you know, it was, was a thrill because her career was just taking off and I didn't expect it. And she asked me to join the band and I'm still there. So oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was all meant to be, but, but we, no, we didn't really plan it. And did she uh, yeah. seek? Did she seek career advice from you in in those very early days when she was starting out on her own? Uh, yeah, somewhat. Yeah, but but to be quite honest, Nash, um, he had more foresight than myself. Really, I'm 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 just a musician with stars in my eyes. <laughs> 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 I, I I just want to play and be on stage, whereas Nash saw the business potential. I think. And I've I've never been 
I've never been a businessman. I don't know if I'd make a good manager even, even though I've done a lot of it. I just, I'm just not that way inclined. I'm just, I love playing, I love songs, I love music, mm. like writing. So I'm, I, I guess I'm a bit more creative than, than now. She's a bit more business-like. Yeah. Mm. But on, on the other hand, is there anything you've learned over the years from, from working with Casey and watching her career that you've taken oh, in with regard to presenting your own sure. music? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot of things. Um, I've learned to, um, how to spot a good song. And, uh, I've met a lot of artists through Casey, and, but I've worked with another, like Catherine Brick, for instance, and uh, a lot of people that I've been involved with their career um, but one thing I have learned I I'm glad I didn't make it big like Casey did because I don't think I ever would have handled it yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm cut out for, for that sort of recognition to be quite yeah. honest no, I think it, it's a, a lot tougher road than people realise to get recognised everywhere you go and, and have people sort of hanging off you everywhere it's a it's quite a lot of pressure, and I, um, I'm glad that I'm sort of more on the outskirts of the whole thing. Uh, it's uh, it's been a great journey, and I've enjoyed watching Casey's success, but not having to deal with all the <laughs> all the <laughs> things that go with that. You know, it's uh, I, I think I've seen enough to know that it's not for me. Yeah, it, you know, not to that extent. And, and I have my own career. I. I do gigs. I've just done a weekend in Adelaide, and uh, then I played on Saturday night down here at a little town called Beachport, and and I do my own gigs, but there's not a lot of pressure at my level, you know. Yeah. Well, you were involved in music for many years before you started recording your, your own albums. Was that something you hadn't really considered beforehand? Um, I only made my first record. Casey got pregnant and told me she was taking a year off. So I thought I've got to do something. So <laughs> I, I made a record. Uh, it, was, it was called Sleeping with the Blues. And uh, then I've been touring with that ever since, on and off. When Casey is not on the road, I, I'm out there doing it, doing the hard yard still. Um, but but I, I, I love it. Um, I'm, I'm totally addicted to travelling and uh, being on stage. Now, a, a good friend of ours on this program and someone you were also very close to was the, the wonderful Audrey Ald, who uh, sadly no longer with us. But yeah. T tell us about coming in contact with Audrey and, ha and, and how you found her as a co collaborator. <laughs> um, I met her uh, you in know, a bar in Sydney at a, at a gig we were playing at and... Uh, she, she, her and I immediately struck up a friendship. Uh, Realised we had a lot in common musically. Uh, we ended up making. Uh, in fact, the first record I made was with Audrey. It's called uh, "Looking Back to See." It was a tribute to Rick and Fell, who uh, influenced me a lot back in the fifties and sixties. So, uh, and it was a duet record, a very retro sounding record, but mm. something I'm still very proud of. So, and we toured with that for about five years, actually, on and off. And then um, uh, she went to America and married a great guy called Mez. Yep. And uh, she lived there until she passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, so we, her and I stayed in touch. We still did shows together sometimes. And I saw her a week before she died, which I, I'm very lucky. You've been something of a mentor to, to quite a few up-and-coming artists through the years. What what do you look for in young talent to make them someone that you'd like to work with? Um, it's usually, um, well, obviously someone that can sing and write, but it's usually people that write um, songs that uh, I can relate to. You know, I'll, I'll hear someone with a certain type something in their voice that gets me and the way they write and uh, I've been lucky everywhere, I'll, everywhere I go I meet people even a few weekends ago I, I was in Gympie and I met a young girl called Cassie and a beautiful voice and writing songs at a very young age and 
now uh, we, we're going to record together next month. So um, uh, I'm recording next Monday with a girl called Beck Willis, who's uh, been around for a while. But, uh, Jessica Bell, another one. Uh, just so many people that I've been lucky enough to work with, Anna, Georgia. Um, and they just keep uh, coming up and chatting to me about music, and usually I can tell if it's someone that I can relate to, uh, to work with. Uh, matter of fact, Anna Georgia, she's from Sydney. Uh, we toured together in America last year. We we did a, a full month right across America. It was so much fun. And uh, she's a great singer-songwriter. And uh, yeah, I'm, I've just been lucky that I met so many great people. Um, and uh, there's a great scene in Melbourne, of course. Uh, I've got a lot of friends down there that people work with on and off, Lock and Brian and the Weeping Willows. And, uh, uh, yeah, just so many great people. That I just seem to be lucky everywhere I go. I, yeah. I'm, I'm working with, with great talent, um, and, it, and it inspires me to lift my game and get better you know still learning yeah you, you do seem to thrive in the uh, collaborative process and I guess working with a variety of other people too helps bring a, a greater diversity in, into your own work it does yeah, um, yeah it, oh, it definitely does yeah I, it, it encourages me to go and write um, and I've co-written in fact I'm working on a brand new album right now and I've co-written about half the songs uh, sometimes we write just via email or, or text message uh, with different people. They might be scattered all around the world. I've co-written songs with people in America via text message. And it's surprising what you can come up with if you keep at it. And, yeah. Have you Anyone you haven't collaborated with yet that you'd love to? You've got a bucket list there? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see... Um, there's bound to be I just can't look I mean we all have a bucket list probably stuff that will never happen but um, yeah I mean I've, most of my heroes are American singer songwriters yeah usually from Texas <laughs> but and I have worked with a couple of them I've worked with uh, um, Halliana Sinlay, she lives just out of Austin, Texas. I've worked with Robin Ludwig. Uh, I've been on stage with quite a few of the uh, Texas singer-songwriters, Jimmy LaFave, who also passed away last year. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Uh, he used to play in his band every time I went to... Yeah, he's, he's amazing. He was a real close friend of mine. I miss him so much. Um, but I, he always asked me to join the band every time I came to Texas, so that was one of the highlights of my career. Hey, talk about your songwriting, is there a set process that you go through or is there something that can vary from, from song to song? Yeah, it definitely varies. Um, I travel a lot and so I'm driving a lot and things come to me when I'm driving. I often pull over and just sing a verse into my phone and then when I get home with a guitar, I'll get the guitar out and sort of try and make the melody fit the lyrics. Uh, but there's, there's different ways to do it. Sometimes people send me a half a verse of a song. Just, it might be an idea they've come up with. They might think that I can do something with it and I mess with it for a bit and sometimes they come up with something that surprises me and them. <laughs> mm. Is there a heavy uh, editing procedure you go through or do you generally find you pretty oh, much yeah. go with your first oh, draft? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, a lot of changes take place and even in the studio the day you're recording you're often changing things but I've heard that Bob Dylan does the same thing so I guess we're in good company oh, they're in great company um, yeah. I read an article yeah I read an article recently where uh, uh, and it was written by one of Dylan's band members that said even on the day he was recording he was changing lyric after lyric like line after line like all the time just jotting things down and I was surprised, actually. I thought, well, Dylan's such an um, amazing songwriter who probably gets it right the first time, you know. Mm. But uh, I, I also spent a little bit of time with one of my heroes, Guy Clark. Um, I co-wrote a song with him once, with him and Catherine Britt. Um, and 
uh, that came out on one of Catherine's singles, I think. But um, I said to Guy Clark when we were sitting around in Nashville um, chatting, and I said, how do you know when a song's finished? And he said, oh, they're never finished. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, oh, okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> So you find songwriting is a never-ending learning experience? Oh, yeah, for sure. And you're always aiming for something better and deeper, I guess. And I, I hear so many other songwriters and I think, why didn't I think of that? You know, it's a, I, I'm very much inspired by other people and they're always aiming for something just out of reach, I think. You know, I'm, I'm always thinking, yeah, I, I think I can do better. So it's a, you know, I've written some things that I'm proud of, of course, but yeah, I'm always aiming, aiming for something slightly further over the hill, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in the <Yeah>. next paddock. <laughs> <laughs> you spend a lot of time on the road, not just your own shows, but also, of course, touring with Casey. Are you able to find time to write when you're on the road or is that something that you best leave till you're at home base? Uh, uh, a little bit. I jot a lot of things down in uh, my diary. Uh, I sing into my phone, you know, record little little tunes and usually wait till I get home in the studio. I've got a studio at home and then I'll sort of drag it all together. Uh, but occasionally a song would just come to me in 10 minutes, you know. You'd be sitting in the motel room with your guitar and uh, just messing around, and all of a sudden you think, man, that song, where'd that come from? <laughs> uh, songs are, are weird things. They're like children. <laughs> They're slightly unpredictable. They yeah. turn up when you're not, not expecting them. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but it's a beautiful thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, is it a tough... A uh, tough procedure to go through sometimes sort of coordinating your touring schedule with, with the work on the road with Casey? Can, can that be a, a bit of a nightmare oh, at times? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Um, it is a bit of a nightmare, and uh, sometimes they'll spring stuff on me and I've already got a gig. Uh, luckily, Casey's got one or two people she calls on to fill my place, but uh, sometimes I have to cancel gigs or a little tour to, to go on a Casey tour. Um, so, yeah, we sort of work together on that. Casey's pretty um, cruisy. Um, and uh, I've got a couple of things coming up, actually, that I can't do with her. She, she's down in uh, oh, Victoria somewhere. In uh, uh, Yeah, that's right, uh, Queenscliff Festival. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I couldn't do that one. She, she's going to be there. And I think Jeb Carb will be filling in for me on that one. Ah, great, uh, great musician from Melbourne. Yeah. Hey, I read that you recently yeah. you recently yeah. signed but, a. Yeah. Sorry, I, re- I read you recently signed a new um, publishing yeah. deal through through the same company that's released your recent album. So obviously you've got a a great mutual trust yeah. and a great working relationship on the go there. I do. Yeah, it's um, um, Will Osland. Uh, he's a soul operator um, and he runs a little uh, record label distribution label and uh, when I say little he handles a lot of artists but it, but it, it's, it's small in the sense that he runs it all himself but uh, he, um, uh, he he definitely does the job that I need because I don't want to be signed to a major label and, and all that goes with that I, uh, I, all I need is distribution, and these days it's mainly just digital distribution, like iTunes and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And um, he, he's also involved with uh, Cobalt uh, Publishing, and uh, I ended up signing with that as well. Uh, that's that's fairly early days with that, so I'm not sure what's happening. But uh, um, I, I do trust Will. He's he's a good good friend and. Uh, uh, he just operates in a way that it's very transparent. We know what's going on. We talk on the phone. So it's a great, great working relationship. And I'm not really bound by it too much uh, because we're friends. Uh, we can both get out of our deal when we want. And it's just perfect for, for my career. 
um, I, I just I I want to be independent, and mm. uh, uh, will allows me to be be that totally. And I imagine for a songwriter, it would be a real daunting task to find someone you have the trust in to put your publishing with, uh, because our music history is littered with stories of artists that have given up their publishing and only regretted it later. For sure, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess uh, there's not a huge risk for me because I've never had a, a real hit record, mm. and, uh, nothing that generates a lot of money. Of course, when, when there's a lot of money involved, you're much more likely to get ripped off, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are some horror stories in the music business, famous people that have gotten rid of their publishing, Credence Clearwater, the Rolling yeah. Stones. Yeah. Um, and, of course, they're, they're publishing a bit worth a fortune. Uh, but, uh, um, no, I, uh, I don't have any problems at all with it. Um, uh, I totally trust Will and what he's got me signed to so uh, so far it's great Terrific Hey Bill just before I let you go you said you've got some new music in the works what what can you tell us about that so far? Uh, I've got an album written in fact I've got about 30 songs so I've got to choose a dozen out of those and I'm about to go in the studio and, and, and have a new album out for Tamworth Um and most of them are still story songs, stories from the road, um, some stories from my trip to America last November. Um, in fact, I drove into Meridian, and I thought, why, why do I remember that name? Meridian, Meridian, why, why do I remember that town? Then I saw a sign that said, uh, birthplace of Jimmy Rogers, ah. father of country music. So, so I found that interesting and it stuck in my mind. And when I got to Nashville, I got talking to a girl that works at the city winery at our gig and she, she mentioned um, Emmy Lou Harris's song, Meridian. Uh, and I thought, oh, interesting that she mentioned that we'd just come through the town of Meridian the day before. So we got chatting and putting words together and wrote a song uh, called Roll On which is a story song about travelling across America so that's where that that one come from um, and uh, I've, I've also written a song for my friend Jimmy Lafay just before he passed away I knew he was sick uh, and it's it's just a song about missing Texas and uh, missing the music there um, so things like that uh, will come out on the new album I wrote, I wrote a song with Adam Harvey for his new record called when Willie's gone, and it's a song about Willie Nelson, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that was fun, fun writing with Adam, and um, he, uh, I've actually met with Willie uh, years ago uh, when he toured here once, and, uh, and so it was a thrill to write a song about Willie Nelson with Adam. Fantastic. Sounds like another wonderful batch of songs coming through. We look forward to it. Hey Bill, thanks so much for yeah, your time. Uh, you've got cool. a you've got a gig over here in no, our neck of the woods in a few time. weeks. We, you're up at the uh, Skylark Room in Upway, which is just around the corner from us. So oh, I certainly am. We'll put this early, to just, early November. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll put this to air in the lead up to that. Fantastic. And uh, oh, appreciate well, I your hope time. Hope to meet you there when I come over there. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be there. Cheers, mate. Thanks for chatting. Thanks, Bill. Bye. Bye, bye.